Oh, it's time for another math. Easy solution. Turn to sky. See a curve sketching example, and look how look at how to graph this function, which is f(x) equals x to the power of two over three times by six minus x to the power of one over three. Uh, basically, the example it goes like just exactly what I just said. Sketch this function, and also we're given basically from our earlier video I showed that the derivative, the first derivative and the second derivative of this function are this or these over here. I'm not going to go over how to get these in this video, but if you want to see how I did it, go watch my earlier video. It's extremely tedious, so uh, that's why I put it in a separate video because it takes quite a while. But basically, once you get this to graph this function, the first thing you got to do is find the critical numbers. Yeah, I'll just write that down. Find the critical numbers, and these these numbers are basically when the the first derivative is either zero or does not exist. I'm gonna write d and e for that. So it does not <clears throat> exist. And to, and we, when we look at this function over here, this is the first derivative, <clears throat> which is yeah, which is four minus x uh, divided by x to the power of one over three times six minus x to the power of two over three. And as you can see, this equals zero when the top is equal to zero. Which, in other words, four minus x is equal to zero, or x equals to four. So in this case here, we know that this is when x equals to four. Yeah, equals to four, and it does not exist when we look at this here. Uh, basically, when the bottom is zero, and that's when this when this x equals zero, you're going to be dividing by zero. You can't have that. So in this case, we have x equals to zero as well. Also on this side here. So six minus x, if this is zero, in other words, x is equal to six, we'll have the zero at the, at the denominator. So these are our critical numbers right here, these three numbers over here. Yeah, now at these critical numbers, first thing we gotta do is first find out the uh, the values of the function at these numbers. So f of four, this equals two. Scroll up here, we have this function here. Yeah, so we'll get 4 to the power of 2 over 3 times it by, yeah, 6 minus 4. That's the uh, power of 1 over 3. And now we can simplify this uh, really quickly. This will be basically, uh, you can write this 4 as the power of 2 over 2, or 2 to the power of, yeah, 2 times it by 2 over 3. And now this equals, in this part here, 6 minus 4 is 2, so 2 to the power of 1 over 3. This Now we could add these uh, up because it's, both of them are power of uh, related with this 3 here and this is, this is the base is 2 so we can just add up the powers so we get 2 to the power of 4 over 3 yeah plus 1 over 3 and then it's just this is just 2 to the power of 5 over 3 so that's uh, f of 4 and you can see more on uh, power functions like this how we get how we got to here in my video link below basically now the next part we have to find out the f of 0 and f of 6 so f of zero is equal to yeah well we just plug in two because number uh, we just plug in zero inside here so we just get a zero uh, in x we're gonna have zero times whatever it's gonna be zero so we have zero and as well uh, f of six right here because there's a six minus x will also be equal to zero and now the next step is uh, is to basically find the derivative uh, uh, for these ones they don't exist but we could find the limits of them so we could go yeah the limit because they don't exist so limit as x approaches well zero now from the left side of the first derivative f of x this equals two when we look up to this function here this is um, basically when we put in negative on this side Basically, it's gonna be negative. I mean, that's the second derivative. So we'll go here, four minus x here. It's gonna be a negative. On, on, I mean, it's gonna be positive on the top because we're subtracting by by negative number. Yeah, we're basically subtracting by zero. It doesn't matter if it's positive or, or negative. It's still gonna be positive. And so this one here, it's gonna be zero, but we're approaching from the left side, so then it's gonna be negative here. And this part is gonna be positive. So we're gonna have a positive, positive, negative. So this would be basically approaching negative infinity. And then also when we look at from the right side of f prime of x, this equals two. Again, when we scroll up here, here we're approaching from the right side. So this is gonna be positive, positive, and this is just gonna be positive zero, uh, power of one over three, that's a zero. So it's all positive, so we have positive infinity. And on the last one, if you go limit as x approaches x, uh, a six from either side of the derivative right here, this equals two when we go back up to this uh, first derivative. As you, as you can see from here, because it's power of two over three, this is an even power there, the two. 
So it's going to be always positive. And then this is going to be 4 minus uh, 6. So it's going to be negative. And this one's going to be positive. Uh, so basically we have a negative, positive, positive. So it's going to be negative for both uh, left and right side of 6. So it's going to be negative infinity. And now the next step is basically applying the first and second derivative tests. You can see more on these in the uh, video link below in the definitions of these. Basically, I'll just write these functions down we already have just so it's easier to uh, go over the, the tests. Basically, this is the first derivative. This is the f of x the derivative and the second derivative derivative over here. So now we have to look at the interval and then see how each the derivative, the second derivative, and, and basically whether they're positive or negative and how they affect uh, how the graph of f of x looks like. And then the first interval is basically based on our critical numbers. So when x is less than our first criti critical number, which is 0. And then the next one uh, basically is when x is, um, when this is less than 4 and greater than 0. So that's our other critical number. Then less than 6, greater than 4. And also when x is just greater than 6 right here. So uh, when you look at the first derivative over here, when x is less than 0, the top's going to be positive. The bo bottom here are going to be a negative number, power of 1 over 3, that's negative. And this one here is always going to be positive because it's power of 2 over 3. So we'll get basically a positive, positive, and a negative. So this is a negative. The second derivative is going to be basically over here. Actually, I'll just continue with the first derivative. So basically, you go when x is between 0 and 4. It's going to be positive here. Positive, positive. We're just going to get a positive. And now when, four, when x is be between 4 and 6 right here. So it's going to be 4 minus number bigger than itself. So it's going to be negative. This is going to be positive. This is still going to be uh, positive. This is always positive here. So it would be negative, positive, positive. So that's a negative right here. And when x is greater than 6, this is going to be, again, negative. This doesn't matter. And this one over here is going to be positive as well. So this is still going to be negative right here. Because it's going to be negative, positive, positive. So negative right here. This power of 2 over 3 always makes it po positive because of the 2. Now when we look at uh, the second derivative over here, when x is less than 0 here, we're going to have, this is always positive here. So this is the power of 4. It's always positive. This one's. This is going to be now, um, this is because it's less than 0. Yeah, and also because uh, here when we're 6 minus a negative, uh, yeah, basically 6 minus a negative number is always going to be positive. Uh, for example, 6 minus negative 2, that's going to be 8. So this is always going to be positive. This is positive because of the 4. So this will be negative right here when it's less than 0. When we look at from 0 to 4, uh, that's again here. This is going to be positive. This top part is always negative here, and this one doesn't uh, affect it at all. It's going to be uh, basically over here. Six minus uh, four, for example, that's going to be still positive. So this is going to be negative right here. And now the from four to six, again, this is uh, this this one's going to be positive. This and this part right here is going to be still positive because we're not subtracting that uh, anything greater than six. So then, and then this is going to factor in again, so it's going to be negative on, the, on there as well because it's negative 8. And now the last one, when x is greater than 6, as you can see here, when x is greater than 6 here, uh, this is still positive. But now we have a 6 minus a, let's say, that for example, 8, that's going to be a negative number, power of 5 or 3, that's, this is odd. So we're going to have a negative and a negative here, they cancel, so we have a positive. So now I'm doing both of the first and second derivative test combined. So as you can see, because of the first derivative test, this is uh, negative. The, the first derivative is negative, so it's decreasing. So it's decreasing and also uh, when x is less than 0. But then the second derivative is negative, so now it's concave down. So this is the first derivative test. The second derivative test just did it combined, concave down. Now we're going to look at this part right here. This is positive. So this is increasing based on the first derivative test. And then the next one is going to be, well, concave down or CD, let's put that there. And now this last part here, this is both decreasing, let's put D there, and CD for concave down is negative and negative. And the last one, this is it's decreasing the function uh, f of x, and it's concave now up. So it's concave up here, which just means it's, it's curving up like that, and this one's curving down like that.
No, actually, the last thing uh, I'm going to get to before I graph it is finding out the limits as uh, basically x approaches negative infinity and positive infinity. So of f of x right here, we look up to this function um, right over here. This is the function when x is going to negative infinity. We're going to have a negative infinity here. It's power of 2, so it's going to be positive. And now 6 minus a negative number, it's going to be positive. So we'll have positive infinity as we go to the left. So plus infinity. And now when we have limit as x approaches positive infinity, see how the graph looks like of f of x. This equals 2. Just go look at it here. So we're going positive infinity. So this is going to be in plus. And now we're, we're going to, this is going to be positive infinity. Over here we're going to have, well, 6 minus a large number. That's as negative as part of power of 1 over 3. It's odd. So it's going to be negative. So it's going to be negative infinity here. So now we can go about drawing the function. Yeah, so now the first thing to do when you're graphing it is first plot out the points we know, which is our, at our critical numbers where, so we know that here f of 4 is equal to 2 to the power of 5 or 3, and you plug this to calculate, this should be around 3.17-ish right there. And also f of 0 is 0, f of 6 is 0, so we could plug these in first. So we know f of 0 is 0, so that's the first point we know. And when we go to 4, let's go somewhere a bit far here, so 4. We know it's about 3-ish, so we could go over here. And that's this point right here, and this is power 2 to the power of 5 or 3. And now f of 6 is uh, 0. So we could plot this point right here. This is at 6 right here. So now we have these points. And we know that uh, we're going to from infinity here. So we look at from the f this first se and second derivative test here. So we go decreasing and concave down. But we also know that the derivative is negative infinity from left of 0. So it's, it's, so it's concave down, it's decreasing, and its derivative is approaching negative infinity. So it's going to be a vertical line pretty much like this. So right here is going to be a vertical line like that. And then it goes to infinity like this, where it's, it's concaving down over here. So we'll go uh, decreasing and concave down. And then there's a negative infinity over here slope. And then uh, from the 0 to 4, we go basically increasing, but still concave down. And also the, the derivative just uh, right of 0 is positive infinity. So it's going to be another spike like this spike but then now then it's going to be concaving down all the way until the derivative is zero over here so it's concaving down but increasing so we'll go i and but it's still concave down now from four to six we have basically decreasing and still concave down yeah and then a derivative at uh, basically six right here is negative infinity so it's gonna be a steep drop so we go like this it's gonna be decreasing and concave down, but then right at here, we're gonna get a steep drop, like that. So we're gonna go basically uh, decreasing and concave down, and there's gonna be a steep drop where uh, the derivative is negative infinity. And now the last one, x greater than six, is gonna be decreasing but concave up, and we know again a derivative at six is negative infinity so from both sides. It's negative infinity, but now we're going to be, it's still decreasing, but now we're, it's just a steep drop here, but now it's going to be concaving up. So it should look something like this. So it's decreasing, but CU concaving up. So it should look something like this graph. Yeah, and here I've uh, actually just uh, basically double checked with Google Graph and Calculus. So graph the function uh, or fx, which is x to the power of 2 or 3 times by 6 minus x to the power of 2 or 2 to by 1. 2 to the power of 1 over 3. As you can see, the function looks exactly like how we went about in our curve sketching right here. And this part right here is about 3 point, so close to 3, about 3.17 at 4. As you can see, it goes from infinity, and there's this sharp point where the derivative is spiking down to negative infinity, then back up to infinity. There's also a spike down here, and then eventually goes to infinity here. So it's concave down, concave down, and then changes to concave up. 
right here. So it looks exactly like our curve. It's just to double check or confirm that it's right. Anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned from this video on the curve sketching. I hope you followed along. It's uh, pretty tedious, but pretty helpful example anyways. And you can also download these exact notes in the link below. And thanks for watching. And stay tuned for another math easy solution.